Um, I can see the whole Broncos, if I look through the microscope eyepieces, I can see the whole Broncos quite clearly, but it doesn't all fit with the camera. So what we're looking at on the screen is only part of what I can actually see down the microscope. But I can tell it's a Broncos. One of the easiest ways to tell a Broncos from anything else is the fact that it's, it's still got cartilaginous islands around it. So right in the middle of the screen, looking a bit like a grey banana, is an island of cartilage. Okay, and so that's part of the cartilaginous plate that you still get around any bronchus. There's another bit of cartilage here. To the left of the cartilage is a blood vessel, probably a vein. And you'll often see large veins or even arteries next to bronchi. Up here, this is another large vein. And you see there's a lot of blood sitting in that vein, although most of that's probably artifacts anyway. But again, we can see, we can see various islands of cartilage. There's a little bit more cartilage there sitting between the bronchus and the vein. We can see, even under low power, that the, that the mucosa of the bronchus is, is folded. You can see it's got that sort of crenulated um, or wavy pattern to it, which allows expansion of the, of the bronchus. And you can see there's some land um, set down, sort of intermingled with the, with the cartilage to some extent. If we go to medium power, Come down this side again. We can see a nice, a nice island of cartilage um, sitting just to the right of the middle of the screen, and of course we've got the mucosa on the left side of the screen. In between the cartilage and the mucosa, we've got sort of a long vertical pale pink feature, and that is the smooth muscle of the bronchus. So, so remember we've got layers of smooth muscle in the bronchus that controls the size of the bronchus. Um, up at the level of the principal bronchi, which would be much bigger than this one, that, that muscle is still circular, <coughs> still in the same sort of circular arrangement as we have in the trachea. But as we go further down the bronchial tree, it becomes increasingly spiral. Um, and anyway, it, can, it effectively controls the, the, um, the diameter of the bronchi. If we, if we go to high power and just have a look at the mucosa,
from the body because there's no tuck around. But you should still be able to see a slope of a smooth muscle. And even on the medium power, we can see that we'll see there's no limits of any cartilage around it, but we can see a uh, fairly common thing of muscle around it. If you go down to high power, so there's, there's a lot of blood, which is just artifact sitting in the middle of this um, bronchial. But we can see, we can see um, down here, we can see the epithelial cells. The balloon that this is filling the top half of the screen and it's full of blood and water. But we can see the epithelium of this has now become simple. I'd probably say this one is simple columnar rather than simple cuboidal. And then immediately underneath the epithelium, we can see the smooth muscle. But you're not going to see much else in a bronchial. Really, you're going to see the epithelium, you're going to see muscle. Um, you're very unlikely to find any extra glandular tissue. And by the time we get down to the level of the bronchial, don't forget the goblet cells have more or less disappeared as well. So they're becoming fairly simple structures. The muscle, by the time we get to the bronchioles, is well and truly um, spiral muscle. It's not circular muscle at all. Now, as we go down, the, the, the next thing we want to try and find is a respiratory bronchiole. And respiratory bronchioles get harder and harder to find. And you can have quite a, quite a lot of time searching around on your microscope slide trying not to throw up looking for a respiratory bronchiole. I think I found one earlier at Oh, I wrote down where I thought it was, so let me see if I can find that slide again. I think this is one, but it's very hard to see, and I apologise for that, but I couldn't find a better example. Now, in the middle of in the middle of the screen at the moment, what this is, I think, is a respiratory bronchial that's been cut lengthways, and that's how you see a respiratory bronchial. Now, I, I know it's difficult to see, and I want you to come around and plot this out, um, but essentially, in the middle of the screen, running from left to right, so sort of in a horizontal fashion, slightly below the middle of the screen, you can see a part of the wall of the bronchiole. So you can see lots of dark nuclei that effectively form a line um, running horizontally across the, the sort of middle half of the screen, if you like. Directly above that, you can also see a wall, and in between, there's a lot of blood and rubbish that makes it hard to make out the airway itself. Um, so there's a there's the there's the bottom wall of the bronchiole sort of running across roughly level with the middle of the screen. A little bit above that there's the partial wall of the respiratory bronchiole. But you can see, especially with the upper wall, the wall has just become sort of islands of nuclei and there's gaps in between. And that's how you start seeing the respiratory bronchiole. It looks like a bronchiole um, cut lengthways, but you start losing the architecture of the wall and you start getting the alveoli actually beginning to bubble. Now, although it's hard to see alveoli in front of Norfus, it's more it's more the disruption of the wall that gives it away. To the left, you can see the wall disappears more or less completely and you start getting the alveoli. But I'll agree, it's not a particularly good example. It would be good to see if anyone can find a better example on their slide. And if they do, I might bring it up and stick it up on the microscope in front um, for everyone to have a look at. But weeders, if you've got weeders in front of you, um, weeders have got some very good diagrams of this including the one I stuck up the other day during the lecture.